In this video, we're going to talk about the LC oscillator tank circuit. So this circuit requires two elements, a capacitor and an inductor. Both elements can store and release energy. So let's say that we charge up the capacitor initially before connecting it to the inductor. So what's going to happen? Current is going to flow from the capacitor to the inductor. So right now the capacitor is discharging. It's losing energy. The inductor is currently being charged by the capacitor. As current flows in the inductor, the inductor creates a magnetic field. The strength of the magnetic field is dependent on the amount of current flowing through the inductor. So as the current increases, the magnetic field created by the inductor expands. So let's say this is a graph that represents the current with respect to time. So while the capacitor is discharging, the current is increasing. Now at some point, it's going to reach a maximum. When that happens, the inductor has absorbed the most energy it can from that particular circuit. In fact, the energy stored in an inductor is equal to 1 half times the inductance times the square of the current. So the maximum energy stored by the inductor is reached when the current flowing through the inductor is at its maximum. Now during the second part of this LC circuit, the current will decrease. When the current decreases, the magnetic field inside the inductor begins to collapse. It decreases. Here's a formula that tells you the strength of the magnetic field along a current carrying wire. As you can see, the strength of the magnetic field is directly proportional to the current. So if the current goes down, the magnetic field collapses. And at this point, the inductor is releasing the stored energy that it acquired from the capacitor. So it's putting that energy back into the circuit. And I'm going to draw another picture for this situation. So when the magnetic field collapses, the polarity across the inductor will be reversed. So current is going to flow from the positive terminal of the inductor towards the negative terminal. So the inductor is releasing its stored energy. As the inductor releases its stored energy, the capacitor is absorbing that energy. So the capacitor is being charged at this point. And anytime the current decreases, the magnetic field collapses. And it does so in such a way that the inductor tries to maintain the decrease in current. And that's why the polarity reverses. Now, in the next situation, after the capacitor has been charged, it's going to discharge into the inductor. But right now, the polarity of the capacitor has been reversed because current was flowing into this terminal. Now, the polarity of the inductor is still the same. But now that the capacitor has absorbed energy from the inductor, it's going to release that energy back to the inductor. So current is going to flow from the positive terminal of the capacitor to the negative terminal of the capacitor. And by the way, this is conventional current, not electron flow. Electron flow is in the opposite direction. So keep that in mind. So this is situation one, number two, number three. So in number three, the current has reverse direction. So the graph is going to be below the, the x-axis. Now, once the current reaches its maximum, all of the energy that has been stored in a capacitor has now been transferred back to the inductor. So now this is going to be step four. Because as step four begins, the current is going to decrease back to zero. Let's uh, finish this. So now the current, as the current decreases, the magnetic field collapses and the inductor is going to change polarity. So it's going to try to support the decrease in current. And so the current is still flowing in the same direction. The only difference is now the inductor is releasing energy and the capacitor is absorbing energy. So the, the inductor is discharging itself, but the capacitor is charging itself. 
And that's the basic idea behind how the LC oscillator circuit works. Energy is constantly being transferred back and forth from the capacitor to the inductor and vice versa. While one element is being charged, the other is being discharged. Now, you need to take into account friction because these oscillations do not continue forever without some energy source being applied to it. So initially, you'll have large oscillations when you place a fully charged capacitor across an inductor, but over time, these oscillations will lose amplitude. And the reason for that is as energy flows back and forth between the inductor and the capacitor, some of that energy is lost through the resistance of the circuit. It could be lost in the form of heat. And so the conductors, the wires, even the internal resistance of the inductor, all of that will dissipate energy. And so over time, the oscillations will average out to zero unless there's some feedback provided to the circuit. So if you can apply energy to this oscillator periodically, the oscillations can be maintained. But you need to introduce some sort of feedback in order for the oscillations to continue. But that's the basic idea behind the LC oscillator tank circuit. So now you have a basic understanding of how it works. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.